Hi, I'm James Catherall, a co-founder of Catherall Audio, and today we're talking about using pedals inside of Mainstage. So I'm going to talk about two different types of pedals, sustain pedals and expression pedals. And then I'm going to split up this video into two main sections. The first section should be relatively short. I'm just going to talk about how to set up the pedals. So if you just want that quick answer to know how to set it up and get it going, then you can check that out and be ready to go. And then in the second half, we're going to explore some more creative usages of pedals inside of Mainstage so you can expand what you're able to do in your concerts. So first, let's start with the sustain pedal. So both pedals use the quarter inch jack. Looks just like this. And you want to look for that port on the back of your MIDI controller. For the sustain pedal, it should be labeled and it should say something like sustain or sus. And that's what you want to plug into for your sustain pedal. Then once you've plugged that in, let's look inside of our concert. So we're going to start in layout mode. If you don't already have a sustain pedal in your workspace, you can look in the screen controls palette under all controls and you'll find the sustain pedal right here. You can click and drag this in and it should look like this on the right side. Once you have it there, you want to click on it to highlight it, click on the assign button in the top left, and then push your physical sustain pedal. And you should see a little light light up on the bottom and that lets you know that it's working. Next, we're going to go into edit mode. I'm going to click at the concert level and then I'll highlight the sustain pedal and I'm going to go to send to all and then my keyboard one destinations. And then I'm going to scroll all the way down to number 64 and that's the sustain control number. And once you've done that, you have your sustain pedal set up and ready to go in main stage. I'm going to use some of the Cathrell audio sample libraries to demonstrate these pedals in this main stage concert. We're going to use the mom's piano and then the wine glass. I'll have links to both of those down below if you want to check them out and download them. And now I can press down on the sustain pedal to test it out. So there we go. That's how you'll set up your sustain pedal in main stage. So that's the easy part. Problem that most people run into is with the polarity. So what that means is sometimes you'll plug in your pedal and then main stage might flip the pressed and then the unpressed state of your pedal. So it might think that it's pressed down even if you don't have it pressed. And then if you do press it, then that's when it'll lift the pedal. And that'll happen because your pedal is basically only sending two messages. It's sending a zero or a 127. The 127 means that the pedal's pressed and the zero will mean that the pedal is lifted. And between the pedal and your keyboard, especially if they're made by two different companies, then those messages can get confused and then it'll get mixed up by the time it gets sent to main stage. So let's talk about a few different methods you can use to flip that polarity. I have some pedals I've tried out here and tested this with to see which ones work the best. I'm going to talk through three different methods and you can try all of these to see which one works for you. So for method number one, I'm using an M audio keyboard and some other manufacturers will have it set up this way as well. But in the manual, it says that when you plug in the pedal, it's going to assume that as soon as you plug it in, it's in the off state. So whatever that message is when it's plugged in, it's going to know, OK, that's the off state. And then when you press the pedal, that means it's the on state. And you can end up flipping the polarity if you plug in the pedal while you have it pressed down. So you can do that intentionally if you need to flip the polarity of the pedal or if you don't want that to happen, just make sure that you're not pressing the pedal and then you plug it into your keyboard and then you can start using it. Now for method number two. I think this one's the most reliable and the one I would suggest using. Some pedals on the bottom of them, they'll have this little switch and this is a polarity switch that you can flip back and forth and it will flip the polarity of the pedal. Not all pedals come with this, so I'll leave some links down below of pedals that you can buy that do come with a polarity switch, just because I think this is one of the best methods to use. And you can see it inside of the concert. As I flip this switch back and forth, you'll see the pedal change. And that's the polarity being switched. Now for method number three. If those first two methods didn't work for you, or if you don't have that polarity switch on the bottom, you can try and switch the polarity inside of main stage. So back at the concert level, I'm going to click on the sustain pedal. And once I have this keyboard destination set to sustain number 64, on the left side, we'll see this area that says range mode. And usually it's going to be set to standard, but I can click on this drop down menu and change it to inverted. And now that should invert the polarity of your pedal. 
It didn't always work for me reliably. I was testing it and trying to go back to standard and inverted and it wasn't always working, but that's just a third method that you can try and see if it'll work reliably with your pedal. So that's setting up your sustain pedal in main stage and some troubleshooting tips you can go through to get that pedal working correctly. Let's move on to expression pedals. This is the expression pedal that I'm using. It's made by M Audio. If you haven't used an expression pedal before, it's just this pedal that goes back and forth like this. And you can use that with expression or with the volume to give some of your sustained sounds some more dynamics and some ups and downs. So not every single keyboard is gonna come with the ability to use an expression pedal. You're gonna wanna make sure you look on the back and there should be another port that says expression or it might say volume or it might say something slightly different than that but that's gonna be where you plug in that expression pedal. If you have a smaller or cheaper keyboard, it might not come with that expression port. That's usually one of those first optional type of things that get cut out when you get a smaller keyboard. So if you know that's something that you really wanna use, just make sure you check ahead of time before you buy that MIDI controller. And now let's look how to set that up in our concert. So to drag in the expression pedal into your workspace, you wanna to go to the screen controls palette and then all controls, and down here where it says foot pedal, you're gonna click and drag that in and it'll look like this one on the left. Once I have it in my concert, I'm gonna click on it to highlight it and then I'm gonna to go to assign, click on that button and then I'm gonna move the physical controller with my foot. And now it's set up. I'm gonna unclick that assign button and go into edit mode. So with the MIDI controller that I'm using, by default, it's set up and wired to use CC11, which is the expression. On your keyboard, it might be set up to do something different by default. But let's check out what this expression one looks like. So now I can go over here to this wine glass sound. I'm gonna hold a chord and then we'll see what happens when I use that expression pedal. So as you heard with that, that range was pretty extreme. So on the physical pedal itself, it comes with this knob. You can see it right there. I can twist that knob to change the range of the pedal. So if I move it one way or the other, then instead of going from zero to 127, I can make it go from like 50 to 127. I don't really like using this knob because I think it's pretty inexact and I can't really tell exactly where I'm gonna be depending on where I have it twisted. So I like to do that inside of main stage. If I go to the concert level and then click on this pedal, I'm gonna to go to send to all, keyboard one destinations, and then I'll keep it on expression. And now on this left side, I can see the range maximum and range minimum. So that's where I can change how the pedal functions. I'm gonna change this top number to 100 and then this bottom number to 50. And now if I go back to that wine glass and you look at this expression knob on the right side, you can now see that even though I'm at the bottom of the pedal, it stops at 50 and then I go to the top range of the pedal and it stops at 100. So I think that's a really important feature inside of main stage, because when you're using these pedals, especially this one that I'm using, it doesn't really have any resistance to it. It's way too easy to be able to move it from one end to the other. It makes it easier to change the range of the pedal instead of having to train my foot to be able to go to the exact spots that I needed. I think that's just way too difficult. You can also go back to the concert level and see how we can change this pedal. So back here at the concert level, if I click on the pedal, Instead of doing expression, I can change this to do volume, which would be like the faders, or I can have it do modulation if I want it to act as a mod wheel or any of these other numbers that I wanna use. Typically, I'll just leave it on expression. One thing to keep in mind with the expression is that with all the stock main stage sounds, it'll basically just change the volume. But if you're using a third party library, then it might end up actually also changing the timbre of the instrument as well. All right, so that's the basics of how to set up a sustain pedal and an expression pedal inside of main stage. So now let's start talking about some more advanced usages. Let's start with the expression pedal. So we had talked about changing the CC number here at the concert level, but now let's see how we can use this pedal to do things outside of just CC numbers. So at the concert level, I'm gonna change this to same as input, and then let's go to the mom's piano. I'm gonna click on this pedal, and now I'm gonna go to the mom's piano, and then down to channel EQ, and then high cut frequency. And now let's change this range max to eight kilohertz, and then the minimum to 300 hertz. And now when I open up the channel EQ, let's check out what's happening. So if I move the sustain pedal up and down, 
we're gonna see now it's changing the high cut frequency in my channel EQ. So when I start playing, we can hear what that does. So that was just one use of it, but that gives you a lot of control over that expression pedal and you can even change it for each different patch. So as you go through your different patches of your concert, that expression pedal will end up affecting different things of your channel strips. Next, let's talk about the sustain pedal. So you can use it as its normal function as a sustain pedal, or what's really common is you can also change it so it acts as a patch advance button. Let's see how we set that up. So at the concert level, I'm gonna click on the sustain pedal and I'm gonna go to this actions area and I'm gonna change it to next patch. So now every time I press the sustain pedal, it's gonna advance through my patches. And that can be really useful, so you can still use both of your hands to play two-handed parts on your keyboard, and then you can use your foot to switch through the patches. And finally, let's talk about one last scenario. So let's say that you're using your sustain pedal, but you don't want it to act as a sustain pedal on every patch or even on every single channel strip. Let's show how we can block it and get more particular about what that sustain pedal is gonna be used for. So on this first patch, I've added a full string sound along with the mom's piano instrument. But I only want the sustain pedal to work on the full strings. So I'm going to click on the mom's piano and I'm going to go to MIDI input. And then on this right side in this empty window, I'm going to click this plus button. And on the left, this is the control that I'm going to want to block. So I'm going to click this drop down menu and I'm going to scroll down to sustain. And then on this right side where it says output controller, I'm gonna change that to filter. And that's gonna block it or filter it out so it's not listening that sustain message. So now we'll see my sustain pedal is still working. I have it right there. And when I play a chord, the mom's piano will not sustain, but the full strings will. So as you saw there, as soon as I pressed the chord and lifted the keys, the mom's piano stopped, but the full strings kept sustaining. So you can use that to really fine tune and control what's gonna be sustained and what's not gonna be sustained. And there you go. That's how you set up pedals inside a main stage. I think that second half where we showed some of the more advanced usages of pedals is what I really love about main stage is you can really get in and have a lot of control to fine tune exactly what you wanna do. And you can really get creative with how you're using even just something like a pedal. Often I'll get questions from people asking me what kinds of things you can do in main stage or they'll tell me what kind of things they normally do with their keyboards and then they wanna see if they can also still do that inside of main stage. And usually the answer is basically always yes. There's really not a lot of limitations. There's only been like really rare specific cases where I've ever really had to outright say, no, that's not really something that main stage is built for. It's pretty wide in its application. I mean, I've even seen people use main stage to do things like lighting effects in their performances. So I think it really only gets limited by your own creativity and what you're able to make happen inside of your concerts. All right, and that's our video. You like this, give it a thumbs up. Make sure you hit that subscribe button. If you have a main stage topic you'd like for us to cover in a future video, leave a comment down below and we'll see you in the next one.